This is DeliveranceMinistry.fm videocast episode 18. Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of DeliveranceMinistry.fm, where we give you proven insights about the demonic realm and deliverance ministry so you can wage spiritual warfare more effectively. And oh, by the way, we also fall in some Christian counseling topics into this to try to give you a real broad look at some of these topics. This is Dr. Don Ibbotson, and here once again with my colleague, Dr. Phyllis Tarbox. And today we're going to look at um, a topic that we, quite frankly, we encounter quite a lot in our counseling center in terms of individuals and even couples that come in. And it has to do in the realm of dealing with a husband's pornography or pornographic stronghold. And our focus today is really going to look at how to provide a concrete help and some specific suggestions for the partner, the the the, one, the wife in the marriage, mm. how to deal with this dealing with the men. That's that's another topic and how helping them to get free from it. But we want to really focus. Felt like it was an important thing because we see it a lot, Phyllis. Right yeah, where we do. where the couples come in and mm-hmm. sometimes the wives come in and their husbands are dealing with it and the wives see it as a problem and their husbands don't. Right. So that's the focus on this yeah, yeah. is specific things that we can suggest and for you or for for the wives for the women to to help uh move ahead and and, and do the things of God and, and respond in a godly way to mm-hmm. what's going on in their marriage. Mm-hmm. So touched on it already but um you, know, you just you, you hear, read the newspapers, you can read Christian articles and and read and we can certainly see for sure and that that pornography is a huge issue in the United States and certainly in the church. Right. And, I, and we see it a lot, sadly, even in pastors. And some of the statistics that we've seen on this is that the porn industry is now generating $13 billion just in the U.S. alone, Don. That's crazy. And, it's big business. And $3 billion of that is just internet porn. And here, here's, here's, here's even an even sadder fact, that the, the global porn revenues have declined 50% since 2007 and you might think that's a good thing mm-hmm. but it's declined because there's so much more free porn online and even with all the free porn online there's three three billion of it that is internet porn so those are pretty heavy statistics you know and 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 when you look at the statistics in the church uh, i was looking at a website yesterday called covenanteyes.com where they really outline a lot of this and one of their websites said pornography is prevalent everywhere today in fact in one in eight online searches for pornography one one in eight online searches is for pornography wow. and because porn use porn use thrives in secrecy Many church members are trapped in a cycle of sin and shame, thinking that they're the only ones facing the temptation. Different than it used to be. You have, you know, years past, people would have to go somewhere. They have to get in their car. They have to drive to some yeah, place, yeah. some seedy or yeah. dark part of town or yeah. whatever. But now with the internet, the, the, the yeah. window is so much wider. It's like, you know, it's like a smoking ash, tr- it's like a, a cigarette sitting in an ashtray on your desk that's just lit. It's so easy to just pick it up and take a drag off of it, where in the past, you know, you did have to, you know, go further. They also cited that 51% of pastors say porn is a temptation mm. and 64% of Christian men and 15% of Christian women view porn at least once a month. That's high. Yeah, that's that's just, high. Statistics are mind boggling. And really. then 75% of pastors do not, are not accountable for their internet use. So there it is. It's, it's right there, right in front of Run, run of us. And even in a, um, one of a, a 1996 Promise Keeper survey at one of their stadium events revealed that over 50% of the men in attendance were involved with pornography within one week of attending the event. And 51% of pastors say cyber porn is a possible temptation. 37% say it's a current struggle. Um, and these were taken from Christianity Today, one of the leadership surveys that were done. And over half of evangelical pastors admit viewing pornography last year. Wow. And we, and we see that kind of see it in the church. I mean, there, you know, we, we talked in the past about spiritual authority that happens in the demonic realm and certainly in the earthly realm. And, and our experience many times that if a, if a pastor in a church is dealing with it, mm-hmm. that that spirit, 
and we'll talk get into a little bit more about the spirit mm-hmm. of pornography, and uh, that issue is going to be many times running rampant through the church, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. it it really it, it's a sin. It's what I many people call it a secret sin. Um, some people don't even see it as sin because well, right. gee, you know, really not hurting anyone. It's not like having an affair, or anything. right? So, and so they've rationalized they've it. rationalized it and say it's 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 a safe sin. It's a safe sin. Yeah, even um, one of the things with focus on the family and their pastoral ministries. They reported that 20% of the calls they received on their pastoral care line are for help with issues such as pornography and compulsive sexual behavior. So that's, again, it just, it's, it's, it's running rampant because it's out there. And, you know, and a lot of the stuff comes, you know, so seductively, so slowly, just when your eyes shift, you know, or you type in a wrong site. I mean, I've had, I've actually even had, um, 15 year old girls come in and say they were just looking something up online and this other site came in These pop-ups that and they, up. and they got, and they got fascinated with it and they followed the train and here they are two or three years later and they're addicted to this pornography and they can't, they can't break out of it. So, you know, it, it, the enemy's real and this is a big thing to get in through the eye gate, right? An addiction of a person to establish this as a stronghold. The eyes and the ears, the windows mm-hmm. of the soul. Right? And then, you know, set up some kind of a desire for it so that you're, you begin craving it and then you need it and it becomes a compulsivity, right? An addiction almost. So, yeah. Well, and there is physical, right? There's some, there's medical evidence out there, medical, you know, and science, if you like, that looks at the things, the chemicals in the brain, and and there's are there are chemicals, right? That, and that I think you know, Chris, Charisma did a really good job on that. Charisma magazine had an article um back in June of 2004 on how to conquer the porn epidemic in the church, and part of that they mentioned that the chemical oxytocin that is released in the brain during sex, it's that chemical for you know like human bonding to emotionally bond you to the person that you're into it with when you watch porn these neurochemicals are released and they bond you to the images Mm. and i think that's why satan sexuality so much because in attacking human sexuality it actually interferes with the human bonding and this this article continued to cite um, a neuropsychologist dr tim jennings and he said any type of repetitive behavior will create trails in your brain that are going to fire on an automatic sequence. And so those are, you know, those are neural pathways. This re- this results in years of bondage. And this is how 68% of Christian men can love the Lord with all their heart, but be trapped in sexual bondage. It says the repeated viewing of porn literally changes the physical structure of their brain. And that is what I've seen walk into the office. You know, I've, I've had people come in that have been, you know, husbands and wives and, and, and frankly, even one of the husbands came in and he, and you know, he was quite, he was quite open with me and he said, you know, I'm, I'm stuck in this. I don't even know how to get out of it. What, what's happened with me is I'm not interested in having sex with a person anymore. This thing has taken over all the thrill centers of my brain. This is, you know, I'm, I'm a kind of a pioneer sort of guy anyway. You know, I like to press the edges. I've always been a thrill taker. But once I got involved with pornography, this just, it, it, this just captured me. And, but what he, but his, his fear was what I'm finding out now is it's, it is not enough. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, now it's not feeding the thrill as much as it did before. And now I'm actually going to strip clubs and I'm entertaining thoughts of prostitutes. And, you know, I've had another wife come in who said her husband was involved in this. And then it went, it crossed that barrier too. It actually got to a place where he was actually um, advertising on Craigslist for partners in, in sexual pornography and things like that. So it, you know, it's, it's pervert. It's a spirit of perversion. I believe that comes in. Um, with lust of the flesh that comes in through the eye gates and then it grabs you and nothing that Satan does, does he do small? He comes in John 10 to kill, steal and destroy. So he wants more. He right. wants more. And I've heard. And they grow. These spirits they grow. grow. They get stronger. There's and they want more. Spirits, right? Yeah. They're like drugs or alcohol. It it's is. Just, exactly. And I think that's the mindset. I mean, the chemical things are good and the medical and that we can track what's happening chemically in the brain. I believe a lot of those things are valid. But 
you know, if we if we talk about the thief killed or steal and destroyed, that our struggle is not against flesh and right. blood. That, that the mindset people have is that there's a spirit behind yes, this. Yes, there is a that spirit behind this. In to us. I and, think that Satan was the one that created pornography and, <laughs> you know, brought in that perversion through a lot of things that came unglued. So, absolutely. So that's that's an issue. It is a spiritual issue. It's um, and you know as we as, as hopefully we understand that spiritual issues need to get dealt with spiritually, right. and right. and that can include deliverance ministry from those demonic spirits. And yes, there's things of the flesh. There's our mind, our thoughts, taking thoughts captive. Mm-hmm. All this different. We talked to different talks, topics about resisting the spirits, discerning them, and whatnot, and taking thoughts captive. All important. But but this these bondages. We use the word bondage. We don't right. use it lightly. These are demonic strongholds at work in a person's mm-hmm. life and they come in through the people's door and like so many things nobody sets out many times to have these things they just kind of how did i get here you right know, what's, exactly what's, that's what i've heard they do, it just it just overtakes them they believe them lies of the world well this will bring mm-hmm. some excitement we'll yeah. do some things we need yeah. something and and you know what harm can it do and and unfortunately as they say as counseling center we we see the fruit of that and and the answer is it, it does a lot of harm so let, let's once again let's focus now really for the balance of this session on 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 looking at it from the wives' perspective, okay. the wives come in. What do the what are the sort of things that you're hearing from wives when they come in? That, that in terms of how it's affecting the, the intimacy in their lives and their relationships with their husbands. Well, the pornography has actually replaced their sexual intimacy with their husbands. So you know they are feeling rather rejected, and you know that would be something that I've heard from some of the male clients too. I mean, even the one the one man that said he was bored with normal sexual relations. So he no longer desired to be with his wife. So I'm, I know that brings so confusion to the wife. Yeah. It's sexually dysfunctional. Right. right. Because that, that actually the wife becomes boring. It's just plain and normal. And so I think that rejection is what br- brings the women in. They, they actually feel like they've been cheated on and replaced with this internet porn. Um, and, and quite frankly, I think that's, that's what happens. These guys have spent so much time in that fantasy world that thrills them beyond sex with a normal human being. And it increases their appetite for different types of sexual experiences. And it, at the same time, it's reducing their ability to experience sex on an intimate level with a person. And so that person being the wife, um, is replaced. You know, that's, there's not a, another lover, but there is. Right. Well, and some men, and, and certainly when you talk to people who, when you get their history, some, some people bring it into the marriage. Some have, some oh, sure. have, have come into the marriage. Sure. And some have the mindset, well, gosh, maybe it's, you know, if I, you know, I, you know, single and, and, and probably now maybe their expectation is that they're going to get married and this is all just going to magically disappear. And mm-hmm. Many times it doesn't, right? That's right. That, that thing was that was a stronghold in their lives before they got married, and getting married does, doesn't doesn't deliver them of that. Yeah, and I, you know, and I've had men come in that are really repentant and they want to be set free from this, and we've seen them be set free from this because it has to be a heart desire, yes. not something that they've rationalized as okay or what it's fine for them to do because it's like you said earlier, it's not hurting anybody, but it is hurting someone. It does end up being yeah, very very hurtful. Yeah, exactly. And so, and, and some, you, sometimes you'll hear it as an excuse, you know, well, their wives, if they felt rejected or their wives haven't been available or whatever reason, then they will use that as an excuse. Well, if she would have right. been there more that for me in that way, I would not, you know, I didn't have to do, I wouldn't have had to do that. And they use right. it as an excuse. And, but once again, which is not a good excuse, obviously, but many times the wife will say, well, they were there, you know. Yeah, they were. They were. They, and maybe, yes, you know, we understand the whole thing of sexual intimacy and marriage. It's a pretty complex topic and there's a lot of aspects to it. But, but many times the wives are there and the husbands, for different reasons, they, they choose many times to go down a different path. And yes, sometimes mm-hmm. maybe their wives aren't there and they do reject it, but that's, mm-hmm. they, they end up opening that door out of that sense of this somehow they owed of this is, you know, they're going to do this instead. And, and it, it turns out not not to be a good solution at all. Yeah, and I think you know, I think the enemy will capitalize on that because any time where a husband feels like he might have been um, cheated or some a spirit of self pity comes in, you know, I love what Henry Wright says about self pity. It's the glue that binds you to hell. So anytime you begin to rationalize from a place of, well, you know, I deserve this and I'm entitled and I'm a provider and I've worked hard all day. 
And then that leads you to a back room on the computer in your office instead of being social out there with your wife. Then the wives, yeah, the wives are the ones for the most part that are coming in because they've been abandoned. They're, they're angry. They're hurt. They're rejected. And those are common responses from the women that I've talked to. So, you know, and you know, porn internet is, is, and they don't know what to do, right? Right. They They don't know what to do. I mean, they, they, they can't change their husband oftentimes if they don't have a repentant heart. Um, so that's where, when they come into us. Yeah. So, so those are the common themes. I mean, as, as you see there, if, if the wife comes in, and let's just say in this instance where maybe the wife is in her by herself or as part of a one on one discussion, I mean, the wives feel hurt. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure many of you listening to this, maybe you can connect with this. There's rejection. They feel rejected. Yeah. They're angry many times. They hurt. They don't understand many times. Right. Why does he need this? Yeah. You know, this is, I'm here. I'm, I want, you know, be part of this. I want to be part of the solution. Mm-hmm. You feel abandoned. Yeah, abandoned. And, and many times we've seen where the men, as you touched on, will get more and more isolated. They will be off board by themselves. Yeah, so do. not only is there mm-hmm. no emotional connection or things going on, but them will draw away. They'll get to the computer. They'll get to their own phone. Maybe they're going out more. And as you say, it can escalate where they're going. We've seen it where they start off themselves and then they end up in some of these strip bars and then they, and then there can be a progression that mm-hmm. does, does not go well. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. and then, and many times, quite frankly, that's when people get caught. You know, yeah. many times I think oh, yeah. the Lord brings the darkness into yep. the light. And people get caught, yep. and and it's like the dark, and and then that's where the, the rubber meets the road. You know, is there what's going to happen here? And well, yeah, because I've had, you know, sadly, I've had pastors come in that have been dealing with porn. Yes, yep. and you know, these are pastors who at the time were planning on going on television and doing all sorts of things, and they came in because they had this open door porn, and they knew if they put themselves out there, it was going to get exposed. So some wisdom with that. Praise God. But. Well, that's it. And that's the best of all possible worlds for us is we're here to try to help people. When right. somebody comes through the door, whether it's for pornography or any other issue, you want, you, our best success is for people who want to get help. Yes, say, yes this is a problem. Mm-hmm. And I want freedom from it. And you can work with that. God can work with that. Mm-hmm. And you always see Jesus worked with that. He didn't empty out the hospitals and heal everybody. But boy, people who did come to him, you know, he, he could work with that and they had faith for it. And so that's the best of all possible worlds. And I, I'm with you. I've seen it. We've seen it in past. You know, it's, you read some of these statistics, we have a hard time believing. You say, well, how can, gosh, you're a pastor. Mr. How can you be doing this? And many times they say they can't stop. It's that stronghold. That spirit has a hold of them. And you need to get to that point of anything, whether it's pornography or addictions or anger or depression, where you rise and say, yeah, this is a problem. Mm-hmm. I can't get help. I can't fix it on my own. Mm-hmm. And people have tried different things. And, you know, and, and if it's a spirit there, as we've talked about, you can't. You can't counsel demons out of people. No. They need, they need to get deliverance from that. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but it, but it does start. What's the person's, the state of the person when they come in? Cause, you know, it is, it is really pornography isn't, it, it's, it's really a kind of adultery, don't you think? Oh, I do. I do. Because, you know, it starts with a little taste and you think, oh, I can handle it. And then you're going back for more and you're going back for more and you're going back for more. And pretty soon that's where you're spending most of your time. It's it, it, it grows, you know, back in the day when they used to charge more for it. I mean, I would have parents coming in with their kids who were growing up these big bills from internet porn at night, you know, it started small and grew bigger. But yeah, as far as, as an emotional adultery, absolutely. I think this is something that comes in to take over and, you know, the enemy hates marriages. So what what better way to divide and conquer yeah and to bring that contention into the marriage and that strife Absolutely. in to start to drive that wedge so so what do we want to say we i mean the wives and maybe i suspect many many, many our women maybe even and wives that are listening to this mm-hmm. than maybe others so you know, a wife comes in or she's, she's sitting there and she's listening to that and say, you know, my husband is dealing with this. I know mm-hmm. this is a problem. And mm-hmm. what if he doesn't think it's a problem? Or what if he doesn't want to help and he doesn't mm-hmm. want to do anything and, and change anything? Or and he's laying all the burden at her feet to do things differently. Mm-hmm. What, 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 what's our best counsel for the wives listening to this? What do they need to start doing? Well, I think with a wife, when she first comes in, I think, you know, it's easy to point at a tangible sin with something like something like pornography. That's tangible. You can point at it. You can say he's got a problem with it. Um, and that, and that is something that you're, you're here for. But what I like to point out to the wives is a lot of times they're collateral damage in this sort of thing. And so even though they can see 
the spirit of uh, pornography, perversion, and lust in their husband, what that thing has done to them could be bringing in spirits of bitterness and anger and resentment and blaming. And before they know it, they've got just as much of a spiritual backpack now as he does with the pornography, but it looks different because, you know, they're kind of like the collateral damage in it. So I just asked them, you know, really to, to start to think about things that they need to have help with and to be, you know, as, to see it as a spiritual, a spiritual battle. Not with, they're not fighting flesh and blood, but the enemy has them both in this battle. And, 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 you know, here they are, they're the ones that are here so we can work with them and, and just to be honest about what they're dealing with in their hearts so that we can kind of walk them through a deliverance prayer for some of the things that have come in the back door of this spiritual addiction. But then also, you know, just on the, on the, on the daily thing to really to identify those areas where they are bitter and where there has been resentment and begin to take those thoughts captive, Right. And not falling prey into the enemy's game plan and letting them end up hostile, hostile, because then, you know, they're, they're going to get some backlash from the spirit realm as well. So the first thing I would say is identify whatever spirits they're feeling like they're dealing with and then seek counsel, certainly, but then begin on a daily basis taking those thoughts captive and not, not allowing the enemy to drag them into bitterness and anger and contention. So it starts with understanding the spiritual realm. It is a spiritual battle. And then say, look, if your husband isn't going to get help, at least you, you, right. need, to keep, you need to get help. To get some help and take care of you spiritually. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe, you know, and as always say, well, Lord, what do I need to be doing differently? Is there things I can be doing to help? Because as people you know, they figure out, we, we, we typically can't browbeat people into the yeah. kingdom of God. We can't get help for somebody who doesn't want help. But but having said that, there are some things we can do in the spirit realm. Right. And one of the things we talked about in another podcast, it's worth bearing here, if you see it as a spiritual struggle, we, we invoke many times Matthew 16, 19. We talk about the realm of binding and loosing yep. and, and speaking life over your marriage. We believe in God wants it whole and health and healthy and healed. But part of it is binding up the demonic spirit. So right. work, whatever they are in that other person, their husband, and loosing the Holy Spirit upon them because right. the power of a praying wife and a praying spouse is key. So much. we need to do that. The binding up the spirits can be very effective in getting that person to that point where there are open to help. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's that's just... And bind them as the Holy Spirit lays them on your heart. And I would be binding up very specifically spirits of addiction, perversion, pornography, lust, seduction sensual thoughts. I would be binding up those specifically with the blood of Jesus Christ. So I would say something like I bind every spirit of perversion, every spirit of lust, fantasy, pornography, pornography, seduction, sensual thoughts. I bind them up with the blood of Jesus Christ over my husband and I loose upon him the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God. I think it's simple like that, you know, when you, and the, and the, and you got to understand that binding and loosing binding is only going to bind them up for a temporary time until that person's will comes back into it again. And then they come back into agreement. You're not casting them out because you know, you can't cast demons out unless the person is in an agreement, right? You have to come in for deliverance and be agreeable for that. So you're not casting them out. So you're doing you're binding and loosing, which is going to bring them back to themselves emotionally for a short period of time until they come back in agreement with the other. So binding and loosing is going to give them a period of time of peace, peace for that. So God can be speaking to them. Right. Because you can't change a person's will. You cannot change a person's will, but you can change your atmosphere. And I think that's a key thing of changing it. You have authority. So, so there's some spiritual warfare, some binding and loosing. What do you, what do you, so, so to get on a, on a practical, or mm-hmm. on a, on a nuts and bolts or a, you know, a fleshly level, what, what, it, what a wife who's dealing with a husband who say, well, I want to do this. I want to bring this in. If he hasn't already brought it into the marriage as, mm. uh, as a couple, what, you know, what's, what, what would be the best response for that? Well, I think that they would need to break any ungodly emotional soul tie between the husband and the wife, you know. And if, not agree, and not agree. The wife should not agree. To oh, that. absolutely not. The wife doesn't need to agree to let that stuff come into her eye gates. No. So clear boundaries on that. Frankly, just no is a good word. No, I'm not going to join you in this. And, and, you know, and then in your private time, you want to break any emotional ungodly soul tie with him from him being involved in that. 
Because, you know, man, you can get manipulative and, and, you know, try to guilt or yeah. fear into the wife. And then that's where you point where you got to say, well, Lord, I'm, I'm going to do the right thing before you, Lord. I'm going to say no to this. I'm going to have proper boundaries. And, and that, and that kind of leads into another aspect of the physical side. Because you understand the physical and enemy side of the marriage is an important part of it. It's part of what God ordained in marriage. So what, what counsel do you give to wives who are asked in terms of, you know, knowing their husband's doing this? And, you know, uh, involved in pornography and, 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 you know, hopefully they're not out there dealing with prostitutes and other stuff because then there's a disease side of it as well, which mm-hmm. is important. But what do we say to wives who ask about, you know, continuing to have relations and intimacy with their spouse, knowing that they're vo- involved in, um, you know, some of these activities? Well, I think if it's pornography, then, you know, they need to be available for intimacy with their husband and, and not give their husbands anything further to rationalize over. But I honestly... Before, right before you would be intimate with your husband, I would, I would again be binding up spirits of fantasy and, and sensuality that would, would, would take him out of even being present with you when you are making love. And I would loose upon him that clarity and that, that he's present, you know, and, the, and, and also ask the Holy Spirit to be a part of that time of intimacy so that there is a, a real bonding and a real connection with the wife that can take place that is that that will overpower anything the enemy is doing because you know what god's kingdom is better <laughs> than the demonic kingdom and there's more authority and power in it but invite the holy spirit into your marriage bed maybe even pray over the bed pray over the computer area um, you know, we've got some house cleaning prayers too that you can pray in your own home on our website, um, to help clear out some of this stuff. Just be proactive, but not necessarily in their face. You know, you don't want to be, you know, antagonizing them or binding and loosing them that these things in, in their face. You really want to be, you know, you want to be, the devils up. yeah, it stirs them up. Boy, they'll manifest. But you want to be a little bit, a bit of a stealth weapon here. So praying over the computer area, praying over the bed. You know, breaking the soul ties, binding and loosing. You're gonna and inviting the Holy Spirit into your marriage bed, into the into the into the bed. So you'll you'll see like a better outcome on this. Keep your husband present. And I think that's. I know someone listening to this. Maybe you're going to have some struggles with that because they've they've, they've kind of been withholding that intimacy until their husband gets better. Mm. You know, and the problem is the Bible makes it clear that withholding your spouse from intimacy gives the devils a foothold. Yeah, and it doesn't. It doesn't top of have the. The desired result. We're talking right. about enemies. It should not be used as a bribe. It shouldn't be as a punishment. There's, you know, yes, there's not, there's no license for abuse. We're not talking about being continually abused there, but you need some discernment. You need to hear the heart of God. And it says that it, that, that it can create, make things worse going mm-hmm. in and going, then withholding that or not doing that. And, and once again, I, I want to emphasize if, if somebody's in a, diseases or out converting with prostitutes at the extreme, then that's, you know, there's, story. that's a, that's a different realm. And mm-hmm. we get that. And, and, but, but, you know, in the natural, you need, you need the grace of God for sure. But, um, very clearly the Bible says there are things that happen that withdrawing and not having intimacy does open the doors right. for demonic torment. And so, you know, that's just one of them that doesn't need to be there. And, and so, you know, you need, you know, doing as under the Lord and being obedient and trusting God and believing. Cause really at the end of the day, God's got to get a hold of their spouse. And yeah. yes, there's some things in boundaries in the natural yep. to do saying no to certain things in the natural. Yeah. We, I think every, we all need to do that. And the wise need to do that. But just having that level of discernment is, is important mm-hmm. and not agreeing to go along with, every harebrained idea that he might have in that realm. Right. Because exactly. that's, God's not calling you to, to walk in, in, in sin in that area and, mm-hmm. and having that proper boundaries and not having fear about what will happen. Well, I'm afraid if I don't, he'll do this. It's like, you're just going to have faith and say, Lord, you're going to watch over him. You're going to, I'm going to do the right things before you. Yeah. I want to be obedient to the Lord. And I'm going to trust you, Lord, for the results. Exactly. And so, I, you know, that may be a challenge. You know, you can see that could be a challenge in the natural realm, but, um, you know, the ultimate is walking in faith, obeying God for doing things that only He can do. So, any other specific suggestions that we can we want to make to the wife whose husband really isn't in a position of wanting help before? Mm. You, come, you come get help. I think that's the, the yes, big thing. You, you come, come get help. <laughs> you get some common Christian counseling help. Yeah. Pastor, you need help. And just don't sit there and stew on your own. So, mm-hmm. now. Let's look at the other one side of part of it and that can happen where maybe a wife is involved in this or husband is trying to get help, wants help, sees it as a problem, 
maybe, and sometimes we, we minister to couples where the husband does see it and he does want it. Oh, help. yeah. So, so, and that's, that's obviously the best of best all world. possible yeah. worlds. So what, what specific counsel direction do we give to the wife there in terms of helping that process along? Well, I think you'd have to move into a direction of deliverance. I, you know, really counseling and deliverance for, for an, an addiction, because that's what, that's what I think this is starting to be. You know, it's beginning to t- overtake the mind and overtake their thoughts. So any direction towards a deliverance ministry with counseling, would be the best thing because those spirits of perversion need to be cast out. They need to be driven out. And then those, those places need to be, be filled with thoughts of God. And so, you know, you can't, you can't do that. A lot of this stuff, when you, when you, when you see a spirit that's driving a person and this is a driver, this is something that really drives them with an appetite, then, you know, it's got to be cast out. So I would just say, get into a healthy ministry like that. That's going to get rid of it. Because again, you don't want to just sit around putting my little hello kitty band-aids on these kind of spirits They, you know, you want them out. They're, they can shrink down through obedience and through, you know, starving them. But if you don't cast them out, they'll eventually seek that food. Something will excite them again and they'll just flare right back up again, which I'm sure a lot of you are sitting there nodding your heads going, that's what's happened to us before. So deliverance is really the method to get them free. And that's the starting point. And, and, but obviously, if this has been in the marriage, there's a lot of damage. There's healing. We haven't even talked about healing. Yeah. But there's, and there's counsel that needs to happen. And, and deliverances can be great and people can get free. But you need, there's healing. There's there's an element of counseling. There's walking oh, yeah, it out. Trust it. needs to get mm-hmm. rebuilt. Using analogy, trust like a brick wall. You know, you can drive a car into it, knock it down. But you can't build a brick wall any faster than one brick at a time. And so it needs to get rebuilt. And there's some counseling. So there's not, there's a whole bunch of things that, that, that need to happen. Happen there in terms of walking out, and mm-hmm. even after deliverance and rebuilding right, and restoring. But God's in that. Fortunately, Jesus is in that business, and, mm-hmm. it, and it, but it starts with the the attitude of the heart. But yeah, right. deliverance first if He's open, and be supportive of that, and, and keep and doing these other things, these prayers, and having the mm-hmm. proper boundaries, and 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 everything going forward, and and trying doing your part to rebuild, help rebuild, and sustain that emotional connection, and and learning how to walk in forgiveness too. I mean, we oh, talk, yes. it's been a big part about forgiveness. There's an element of we forgive people, yeah. We need wisdom, but we're not going to dwell on everything that happened in the right, past. So we're going exactly. to choose to forgive, release judgments. We're going to, you know, as he employ what Paul says, and part of it is forgetting what is behind. I'm not mm-hmm. going to bring up. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to choose to look forward in faith, not bring up everything of the past because God forgives us of our sin. If we repent and cleanses us, remembers our sin no more. And the devils will work to keep stirring up memories. So learning how to win those mind battles, that's an important thing going forward too, right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Well, it takes, it's, you know, we've, we've touched on some different things here. Hopefully some helpful things to get you started. Once again, it's a spiritual struggle, but if it's, um, you know, demonic spirits or strongholds behind this in the husband, then it, he needs to get to the point of wanting to be free and get mm-hmm. delivered from him. And that's, and that's certainly the first parting start, starting point. Any final one thought or? Yeah, I think it, it only takes one person in a marriage to change things and. And to use the authority that was given them by Jesus Christ. So I believe the prayers of the righteous wife availeth much. But they have to know if, how to effectively pray with that authority. And crying out to God just to change their husband is not going to be enough. So I think strategic prayers are key. I think a lot of what we shared today is key. But there is there is hope. And that's what I think we need to leave them with. There is hope. There is an answer and, you know, God is hearing your prayers. If you're hearing this, then he's already answering a lot of what you've asked for. And so just continue to seek him and anything that we can do. <laughs> Fair enough. Amen. Hope you found this helpful. Um, if you need help in this area and you can't find it locally, please, we, we love to connect with you. Yeah. You can visit our website at uh, Above and Beyond Christian Counseling. Its website is as a, a and b counseling.com. Um, we have our podcast there as well. This podcast and others, there's blogs and articles there. Um, we would very much appreciate once again, if you'd leave a review for us on iTunes, that's our deliverance ministry.fm is our station. If you do it, we'll send you a, a, get you a link to download a free copy of our deliverance ministry, plain and simple manual. Um, we've also have I mentioned the a and b counseling.com and the academy website, a new, a new, um, resource there. Or you can sign in and log in, become a member for free to get access to a lot of our teachings, podcasts, audios, videos, and articles. Love to have you do that as well. Keep letting us know what topics, things you like to see, uh, or like to hear us explore more. Any comments and suggestions, we value them.